Dear friends and colleagues, uh, we are very happy at the Euronco platform to uh, have today uh, one of the presenter of, at the EAU, Felix uh, Guerrero Ramos from uh, uh, Madrid. Uh, Felix, thank you very much for being with us today. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on board uh, for this interview. Um, we are seeing these uh, devices with in bladder cancer that you, you drop into the bladder. We, we discussed this previously at the Yonko platform. And today at the EAU, three studies were reported, either results or um, methodology. Yep. Can you tell us about this, this study in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer? Well, uh, first of all, thank you, Benjamin, uh, yeah, so for well. the invitation. Um, there are uh, three main studies in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer with uh, these devices. As you comment, there are two devices to start with. There's two, TAR-200 and TAR-210. Okay. TAR-200 releases a uh, gemcida being over three weeks and TAR-210 releases erdafitinib over three months. Okay. So with TAR-200, we have Sunrise 1, which is a trial uh, reporting results on CIS, BCG and responsive population. And they report um, a, a complete response rate of 77%, which is okay. quite high compared to what we've, uh, we have had and even uh, compared to FDA approvals like Pembro and Nadofarogin. And this is in the, in the arm where the TAR-200 was alone or ad associated with cetralimab? Yes, uh, this is the arm where TAR-200 was alone. Okay. Uh, they decided in... Uh, like one year ago, they decided to discontinue the arm with TAR-200 plus cetrolimab because yeah. it was like a similar efficacy but with increased uh, toxicity. So uh, only TAR-200 provides a 77% complete response right. in those CIS BCG responses. Yes, yeah, that's, that's a huge, huge yep. uh, complete response at that time. Okay, so Sunrise 1 was for BCG and responsive and it's just TAR-200, so gemcitabine into the bladder. That's it. And there were also the presentation of another study that is an enrolling patient right now. Yeah, well, there is all, in Sunrise 1, there is also another cohort, which is called 4 for papillary only disease, but there are no results reported. On no those. reported. They okay. are currently recruiting. And then uh, uh, we're presenting as well the design of Sunrise 3 trial, mm -hmm. which is a trial, a pivotal trial for BCG naive, high risk BCG naive patients. Okay. In this case, patients are randomized to receive either BCG as a control arm or TAR-200 intravisically or TAR-200 intravisically plus cetrolimab. Yeah. There are no results still on this uh, trial and recruitment, I think it's around 60-70%. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's a huge uh, huge study with uh, yeah, enrolling a lot of patients. patients right, I think, yeah, yeah. 1,000 patients, okay. So we are hopefully waiting for some results in this early stage uh, in the coming two, three years. Uh, but yeah, one peculiarity of this trial yeah, uh, is that uh, we know all the other trials with uh, immune oncology, systemic immune checkpoint inhibitors, yeah. and all of them have BCG yeah. in their interventional arms. So this is the first phase three trial in BCG uh, naive patients where BCG is only in the control arm and the interventional arms do not there have no BCG. no addition of BCG. Yeah. Interesting. That's true. Uh, and then there is something that I, I really want to hear from you. Uh, you have presented the early phase one study on TAR-210. So TAR-210 is this kind of the same pretzel device uh, with erdafitinib inside, but it's not exactly the same device, right? Yep. There are some uh, technical differences like the microperforation of, of the silicone, uh, the, the influence of the pH on the device and all this, uh, but basically TAR-210 has a, gyms, uh, has a erdafitinib and the release is over three months instead of Compared three, to three weeks. weeks. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's a really longer, uh, you keep it much longer yeah. into, into the bladder. So you, you, you have performed this phase one study. Um, can you tell us about the, the results of it? This is, as you say, a first in human study. Two relevant courts are uh, reported here. Court number one, which is BCG unresponsive papillary only disease, no CIS. Okay. And court three, which is intermediate risk tumors uh, who have a recurrence. Let's say uh, that all patients must undergo a molecular screening, either in urine or tissue for FGFR alterations, which are the targets of the drug. And for court one, those patients with a BCG unresponsive disease papillary only, there is an 82 complete response rate, wow. which is quite high as well. Yeah. And if we look at core three, core three is an, uh, a chemoablation approach. So uh, we are in intermediate risk. That's, yes, that's intermediate. one. That's very interesting because this is the first time the TAR is uh, designed to be in an intermediate yep. risk. So we are in a completely different earlier stage. And in this stage, there is, were no TORBT. So you just that's drop the, the device into the bladder with the, the polyp inside? Yep. 
So that's it. The, the design is totally different because it's not an adjuvant approach, but a chemoablation approach. Yeah. So you leave the tumor inside the bladder, you use the device, and uh, the, the complete response rate is 87%. 87 of the patient, 87% of the wow. patients avoided uh, TRBT, and all the responses have been maintained uh, with the current follow-up uh, we have in the trial. Uh, that's, that's impressive. That means just dropping the device was avoiding to do any TRBT for 87% yep. of the patient, meaning I hope we will still have to do a surgery one yeah. day because that's, that's uh, telling us that maybe we will uh, have to skip some TRBT. But what about the patients who recurred? Well, patients who didn't have a complete response uh, uh, and who accounted for yeah. those 13% were mainly uh, two of them, one of them because of um, a high-grade cytology, okay. uh, voided cytology, but there was no evidence of tumor inside the bladder. So and the tumor was removed. Negative. Okay, yeah. tumor was removed, but still a, but a positive cytology. a positive cytology. cytology. Okay. And the other patient was uh, due to a big partial response but not 100% response, so it was not a complete response, but it was a big partial response and uh, the patient was allowed to continue dosing. Okay, and uh, when, do you, when were you following the patient? When do you, were you performing the first cystoscopy for this patient? At three months. You, at three months. You place the device and at three months you have to replace it. Okay. So once you are going to remove the, the first device, you perform a cystoscopy and if everything is okay, you place the, the next device for the yeah. cycle. Okay, this is still a, a phase one study, but we are, that's very impressive results in terms of, of complete response uh, with chemoablation. We have already some randomized clinical trials like Davlaka 13 uh, published in GCO last year yep. who show that chemoablation is, is really a new option and it's coming also in the, in the guidelines more and more. But uh, I think with these new targeted therapies for patients who are FDFR, it could be really an impressive result. And we know that FDFR alteration are, are more important in intermediate risk yep. than they are in uh, metastatic or muscle invasive bladder cancer. So yeah, the earlier the stage, the higher the, the incidence of alteration. Indeed, says. indeed. That's, that's very interesting. And I think you are also um, giving a talk on, on how to insert this kind of device. I mean, we are, we are urologists, so we are, we are used to, go, to use devices, and that's, that's a new way to, to address and give a drug to yep. a patient, right? Yeah, it's, uh, for any urologist, this is a very simple procedure. You just need a, a urinary catheter, yeah. and then you, you put the device through the catheter with a pusher, uh, and it, the learning curve or, of this must be one or two cases, yeah. so it's very easy. And when you have to remove it, it's like removing a, a, a detailed catheter. Yeah, mm. uh, so it's, it's uh, no problem with that. Just uh, flexible cystoscopes, then the forceps, and, and you bring everything out. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Felix. I think we are all looking forward for the next uh, yeah. uh, data. Hopefully in the next few years, we will have everything. Thank you for your time. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you.